Lots. What happened in that famous Canadian Grand Prix when <laughs> he supposedly switched the engine off on the last corner, waving to the crowd? What was the real story there, John? Oh, do you really want to know? Yeah. So, Canadian Grand Prix, 91. No racing driver should ever do this. And he'd not done it before. If he was about to win a race, or it looked like he was about to win a race, he'd go flat chat to the end, cross the line, maybe you know, throw his arms up in the air, as, as he goes over the line. <clears throat> the crowd in uh, Montreal was standing up in the stands cheering Nigel Mansell when he had about four corners left to go. And he came down the, around the last but one corner and a car slowed and he didn't make it across the line. It was any one of these things if they'd happened alone or but for one of these things happening, he would have made it. But it was a catalogue of... Uh, of little elements, he, he was going more slowly than he should have been. He wasn't travelling at racing speed. He was on a slowing down lap when he hadn't even finished because he was leading by half a lap. So um, it was the first year that we raced the semi-automatic gearbox. Um, the, uh, he changed gear. The gearbox just hesitated as it, as it, because it's a mechanical system, it took one thing out of drive, another thing. There are things called dogs, which are like castellations on... On, on rotating components that have to go into mesh, the things that grind if you don't put the clutch down in a manual car and push the gear lever across. So there's this hesitation. The engine management system on the Renault engine, when you were changing, uh, when you were changing upper gear, would cut the revs to the engine by a proportion which, which would give you the right speed in the new gear. So they cut the speed. Uh, the gear didn't go in and the uh, engine was running slowly, the uh, alternator voltage was, was low, um, and all of these things conspired to make the engine keep trying to cut itself to a lower speed instead of maintaining the speed that it had been in at the point the gear was pulled. And basically it went into a spiral that, that condemned the engine to stalling. Um, we had not been imaginative enough in the uh, reaction to a balked gear change like this, um, and if he had just stopped, he kept pulling the gear lever, you see, if he'd stopped with it in neutral, revved the watsits off the engine to restore some voltage, he'd have got it into a gear. But it was a situation, it was a, a little glitch that never happens when travelling at racing speed. And it's an example of where something is tuned and, and optimised to run on this knife edge of performance, and the case in which he found himself was not a case we'd ever explicitly gone and looked at or had happen in testing. And then, we, and then we looked and went, oh yeah, it's obvious, isn't it? Yeah, it cuts the engine re speed from, to, f from its value to 88% of that value because that's the speed of the engine in the new gear. And, it, and every time he pulls it, it changes it to 88% of the speed it's got at the moment, not the speed it should have had if it hadn't been strangled the moment before. I don't know if that makes any sense. It does, and, and good to know that he didn't, the, the, the famous thing is that he actually flicked the switch when he was waving to the crowd, which of course... Yeah, he didn't just his... hit a kill button. No. Um, and it's one of those horrible things. You know, the car gets back, the mechanics put it up and stands in the garage, they uh, plug in all the umbilicals, they get the starter motor, fire it up, the, the mechanic's sitting inside, he goes... through the gears, everything's fine, you take it apart, there's nothing wrong with it but you'd been in that extreme kind of so-called edge case, which is a part of the operating envelope you'd never been before. It didn't mean that you couldn't go there. And so you strained it all out, tested it to death. And of course, you never went to that extreme of the envelope ever again because everybody had learned. But you hadn't mapped the whole operating envelope because you hadn't realised that that was you know, a part of the envelope you'd ever find yourself in.